Hello my friends, this is Christian. Today I will show you a very exciting and funny opening against the F4 bird opening from white. And I will show you the traps exist in this line and also I will show you how you can continue in uh, longer games. Okay, it starts with the move pawn to F4. And now we're recommending with pawn to e5. This is called the from scambit. And at first I will show you the complete accepted line. F takes e5. And now we are offering another pawn with d6. E takes d6 and bishop takes d6. And now we have reached critical position. Because your opponent has two moves to play. That is knight to f3, that is the better one. And the second one he can play is the g3. And if he plays another move like d4, c4 or knight to c6, for example here knight to c6, we have a forced checkmate. And it starts with the queen to h5. The only way to defend is to play a pawn to g3. And now it makes no difference, you can take with the queen or take with the bishop. Perhaps we are taking with the queen. Queen takes g3. He has to take back. And we have now this forced checkmate on g3. That is the reason why he should play uh, for the best the knight to f3. And if you play against a stronger player, um, they will always play knight to f3. So and in this position, I thought for a long time how could I continue with a very aggressive system? And at first I looked for the move uh, bishop to g4, but I decided to play g5. This is a line which is played by a few grandmasters and uh, I played this too and liked them very much because it is very dangerous. We're threatening now the move g4, removing this knight from f3 and now the checkmate threat work works again. So that is uh, very dangerous. And if, for example, white tries to defend this pawn push with a move like h3, we have this cute checkmate on g3. So that doesn't work too. So, but what option does white have now? For example, he can play pawn to g3 pawn to e4 or pawn to d4. That are all natural moves which are played very often. So I decided to show you how you can continue against these moves. And we're starting with a big mistake and the big mistake will be pawn to e4. Looks very natural because he can build up a, a pawn mall here with a d3 or a c3. But uh, we are faster in our attack. We can simply push this g pawn and he has to remove the knight. The best square here is knight to d4. And now we can simply give this queen check, queen to h5. And uh, now it is a very bad position for white. Because he can stop, for example, this check here with pawn to g3. But now we can simply capture this pawn and he cannot capture back because the rook is hanging in the corner. So that doesn't work. The best move here is king to e2. But this is also not really good. After our next move it will collapsing because we are playing pawn to g3 and now we're threatening this to take this pawn on e4 with a check and on the other side we're threatening bishop to g4 and taking the queen and i would say this position is completely losing now okay that's the reason why your opponent should not play the move pawn to e4 now now the second move what is possible, for example, is to move pawn to g3. Now, 
I will show you how the game can continue after the G3 move. And this is really important to know because this is the most often played move here in the online database. So, very important to know if you play the G5 line, you should remember whenever you can play the pawn to G4 and remove the knife, knight from F3, you should do this immediately. And let's have a look how the game can continue. Pawn to g4, knight goes to h5, this is the best square here for the knight. And now we have two options, for example bishop to e7, this is also playable and a good move. But I will recommend the move knight g to e7, because I want to have this uh, check from the bishop at the g3, so I don't want to go uh, with the bishop to e7. My opponent has few choices. The most natural move and also a good move is pawn to d4, open up the center and going for a counter attack. And we're just uh, following our plan, knight from e to g6. The plan is to uh, remove this uh, knight here and we're attacking twice here. And so my opponent has to do something because he is uh, really afraid of this kingside attack and he plays knight to the g2. That is looking not really good because the bishop is blocked now. And really important now, first develop your knight to c6. And this is a critical position in this line because uh, the, your opponent will be thinking, oh, this is a very strong attack here with pawn to h5, pawn to h4 and crushing the king's side very quickly. And so he's thinking, oh, I have to do some counterattack here. That's very important to open this p position here. And so it is a very uh, natural move to play e4 here and uh, threatening, for example, a e5. But this will be a big mistake because we'll simply capture the d pawn with the knight and the queen cannot capture back because for example queen captures d4 we have this little check with the bishop and the queen is hanging here and that will be losing for white so that is not possible and for example if he plays a move like uh, knight to c3 you can also capture this pawn in the middle of the board and it will be a very comfortable position for the black one because he cannot easily play a move like e3 because you have this little check and this uh, position will be really destroyed for the white ones and that was the pawn to g3 line and now I will show you how a game can continue after d4. Now let's go to the last part of this line. And this starts with the move pawn to d4. That is uh, one of the main moves here in this position. And now remember if you're playing the g5 line you have to push this pawn very quickly if you can do this to remove the knight from uh, the f3 square. And now I will show you how the game can continue after this. Pawn to g4 and now the knight has only two good options, two natural options too. And this is knight to g5 to develop to e4 and then attacking this bishop. Or the second one is playing knight to e5. And now I will show you both of these lines. At first we start with knight to g5. That will be a big mistake because of this f5 move blocking the last square for this knight here. And the best move your opponent can play and that is also that what the computer prefers is the move e4 going for a counter attack here but it is too slow because we can play this little h6 attacking this knight here and if he tries a counter attack with e5 you simply play knight uh, bishop to e7 and this knight has no square. All of these squares are blocked by pawns and so you can you're up a piece early in the opening 
That's the reason why he should not play knight to g5. Instead he can play, for example, knight to e5. This is a much better move than the knight to g5. But you can simply capture this knight and he capture back. And um, you should uh, change queens here now, because white is losing a castle right now. And that will be a little bit more slower and the positional game here. But it is okay. And now I will show you that little bit more concrete. concrete. Now both players are just develop their pieces. For example, knight to c6, uh, bishop to f4, defending the pawn here on e5. And here knight to e7, knight to c3, bishop to e6. Very natural moves. And here comes the e4 to open up the diagonal for the white square bishop. That is also very natural. And now comes a really important move you have to remember here. And that is pawn to h6. You want to block the square for the bishop because it can go to this uh, uncomfortable f6 square. And that you have to uh, know in this line. So h6 very important. Then uh, white develops his pieces with the bishop to the e2 and we're just attacking here this bishop and the best square for the bishop is the e3 to uh, controlling many squares here in the middle of the board and we're just castling on the queen side now. The king has to uh, uh, go to another square and possible is c1 or e1. And the most of uh, your opponents will go, I think, to the e1, because in the end game he wants to uh, go very fast uh, to the middle of the board and not blocking uh, the rook if he goes to a c1. So very natural. And now an important move again, and that you have to remember if you can jump into the middle of the board now with your knight, uh, let's do this. It's a really important position now. So knight to the d4. And he has to forcefully capture because of this threat here. And you simply capture back with the rook. And uh, another uh, natural move here is to play rook to the d1. And then uh, you should not uh, double up the rooks. There will be no mistake, but it is better here to take the rook immediately. And now white is setting a little threat, because if the bishop takes here, he it will be trapped with the b3. But uh, if you are a good chess player, you know this easy tricks. So we can take simply this pawn on uh, e5. And that will be a very hard uh, endgame here. And now there comes a natural move like uh, knight to the e3. And here rook into the open line to the uh, d8. And now there's a good move here, what also the computer prefers, that is the rook to f8, f1. And now very important to play rook to d4, attacking this pawn here. And uh, your opponent cannot defend with this bishop, because you're two times here. That will be a big, big mistake here. So he has to play another move, and for example to defend this pawn with the rook. But if he tries to defend with the rook, you can simply attack the rook with the knight to g6. And if he tries here a counterattack with knight to f5, you can simply go out of this attack with the rook to b4. And the rook has to retreat. And then that is important. I would not take this now. That will be not really good. The better move here is first to save this pawn here because it is attacked by the knight. So we play pawn to uh, h4, 5 and protecting this pawn also. So um, there are two pawns attacked. One at the first time here the pawn on b2 and at the second time the pawn at e4 and he can't defend both of them so he tries to uh, save this uh, three pawns here with playing b3 and then you can simply capture this pawn on e4 
And now you have a huge advantage here in this rest of the game. And that will be, I think, the best way to continue after the D4 line. If you like this video at this moment, please feel free to like, subscribe or comment on this and I will be very happy about that. And uh, now if you follow the video, I will show you a complete repertoire in this Gambit line. And the next thing I will show you how the game can continue after white takes only one pawn in this opening. And uh, that goes like this, pawn to f4 pawn to e5, f captures e5, and we're playing d6. We're hoping that he will complete accept our uh, dangerous gambit here. But uh, many players are afraid of them and are playing the knight to f3. And then we have to take this e-pawn, and for example he takes with the knight, and then this very important move, bishop to d6, attacking the knight, and he has to retreat. Why does a pawn up? But uh, we are a tempo up here. And we should just develop our pieces first, knight to f6, and for example your opponent plays knight to c3 here. And now um, we're gonna start a very aggressive attack with the h5. And then your opponent has uh, many options, and the most natural option here is to build a pawn chain here. For example, e4, or d3 and then the, he have a very comfortable and natural game but there is a little trap for example he wanna play e4 now he overlooked this trap and this is knight to g4 and whenever he tries a move like pawn to d3 that this will be a big mistake because here comes the threat Knight takes h2 and for example if you want to take with the knight here comes this little queen check on h4 and this knight is gone. So that will be a very cute trap. For example I'll play a, a few moves here and that are the king on e2 and you take this knight with it is a uh, knight with the bishop and he can take it with the rook here now and we just uh, give this check with the bishop king goes here for example to d2 and we're just capturing the rook here and this is completely winning for the blacks okay and here it comes the last part of this video and now I will show you how a game can continue after your opponent don't accept the gambit. And it starts with f4, e5. And now he plays an uh, aggressive move here and this is pawn to d3. Because if we're capturing immediately he can take it and develop his pieces and he's going for advantage by himself. So that will be not good to take this pawn, uh, to take this pawn here on f4. We just develop the, the knight to the c6 square. And uh, for example he wanna go for aggressive game and gaining space with the e4. Very natural move here. And then it is okay. That now we can take this pawn on f4. And he can take with the bishop, that is also not okay. And then we play this very, very important move to gaining space and going for a counterattack, the d5. And he has to forcefully capture this pawn. And we're taking with the queen. And now what is more natural like uh, attacking the queen now with the knight to c3. And we're just going with queen to a5 like in the Scandinavian opening. And he has developed his pieces here with a knight to f3 for example. And here comes a tricky move and that you can remember in, uh, for example, you're playing uh, Scandinavian opening or like this. And that is the move bishop to a3. This is the strongest move in this position. Because what will happen if he takes? Yes, we're taking the knight with a check. 
and that will be not really good for the white one. So he has to uh, play a very careful move here and that is uh, queen to c1. And now he can just develop with the knight to f6. And the most of the, your opponents will be playing the bishop to uh, d2 facing the queen here and going for a threat. And you will just uh, turn back your bishop to the e7 and he plays for example bishop to e2 and we will develop our pieces with uh, bishop to e6 and then he tries to uh, go for this counter attack here with the knight to uh, e4 and threatening the queen here but you just can go to another square to this uh, little a6 square and now your opponent has to be very careful because there is a threat the most natural move here will be castling on the king's side but this will be a big mistake he will lose a piece very quickly and that is a uh, easy trick here knight takes on e4 and the pawn takes on e4 and you're simply capturing the bishop here and that will be a cute trap here so your opponent has to be very careful in this opening in this line and if you have this position it is uh, very easy to play for the black one and the better player will win this game i hope you enjoyed my next video of secrets openings and I hope you have found a new system against the first f4 opening from white. And I hope you have much fun with this. Bye bye.